the perfect home lab. Is there a perfect home lab? Well, arguably, there's no right or wrong way to build a lab environment at home. However, I am super excited to walk you through what I believe is the perfect home lab setup, at least for me, in this part of 2024. After lots of testing, different setups, different hardware, I think I've finally found the sweet spot that balances performance, cost, and efficiency for the home lab environment. So what's in my setup? Well, let's dive right in and break down the components, why I chose them, and how they're performing so far. Before we dive into the video for today, I'm excited to share with you guys a giveaway in conjunction with this video. Minis Forum graciously sent over a Minis Forum MSA1 with the Ryzen 8700G processor, 32 gigs of memory, and a one terabyte SSD. This is over a $700 mini PC that you have the chance to win. So what do you have to do? Well, nothing difficult. Just subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on this video. Also, like and subscribe to the official Minis Forum channel. Simple and easy. We will be picking a winner over the next week or so, so please enjoy the video. First up, let's talk about the heart of this setup, the Minis Forum MS-01 Mini PC. I've got two of these in a cluster configuration. And let me tell you, they are fantastic little machines. The MS-01 is powered by the Core i9-13900H processor, and I have upgraded both of them to 96 gigs of DDR5 memory. But here's where it gets interesting. I'm leveraging NVMe memory tiering with VMware ESXi, which has allowed me to extend the system memory on the Minisform MS-01 to a whopping 478 gigs of memory. Now let's talk a little bit more about this memory tiering feature in VMware ESXi. With this setup, we can add memory to the system using a dedicated NVMe drive. VMware intelligently manages this, keeping the most frequently accessed data in DRAM while storing colder memory pages on the NVMe drive. Now this feature alone has been a game changer already, allowing me to run more virtual machines and containers than would otherwise be possible with only the 96 gigs of system memory. I think this is the missing piece for me that I've been waiting for to really use many PCs for home lab, as system memory has always been the bottleneck with these, as even with DDR5 and SODIMM memory, we are limited to 96 gigs of memory as mentioned earlier. Be sure to check out my video showcasing the new NVMe memory tiering feature in VMware ESXi 8.0 update three. Also for my perfect home lab setup, at least at this point, I am still sticking with VMware vSphere as I feel like it has the best offering for home lab environments now with the new NVMe memory tiering feature. And many may disagree with me on this. I think Proxmox is a fantastic hypervisor and I really love it as well. However, this NVMe memory tiering has really kept me over on the VMware side of things for the home lab, just with the cool things I can do with it. This is just something that Proxmox doesn't have currently, but it could very well add this in the near future. Now, some have commented on the blog post that I posted about this topic and ask, isn't this just the same as paging that Proxmox already implements? I know that a lot of it could be marketing and architecture from the VMware side of things. However, I do think and I have experienced this that the NVMe memory tiering is a more intelligent way to decide which memory pages go into that NVMe memory tier and not just overflowing memory pages into a page file somewhere with no real intelligence or rhyme or reason to that. So I do think at least at this time, the NVMe memory tiering feature is a killer feature that allows me to have 478 gigs of memory on my Minis Forum MS-01, which with Proxmox, I can only have 96 gigs of memory. That's just a quick overview in a nutshell why I'm sticking with VMware vSphere, at least at this point in the home lab in 2024. 
However, things are always evolving and changing, so do stay tuned on that front. Now, some of you might be wondering, why not go with enterprise server gear? The truth is, enterprise hardware can get really, really expensive, and the energy costs are kind of the unseen costs to run them 24 by 7, and when you look at how much it costs in energy just to run this enterprise gear, especially enterprise servers, it's just not feasible for most home lab enthusiasts. That's where many PCs like the Miniswarm MS-01 come in. They offer a fantastic balance of both power and efficiency without breaking the bank or those over the months and years energy costs that can certainly add up with enterprise gear. Okay, so what about storage in my perfect home lab setup for me? Well, that's where my NVMe NAS comes in. I've chosen the TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus that I have loaded with six 2 terabyte Samsung Evo 980 Pro drives, and it's running in T-RAID, which is a TerraMaster RAID. It's a hybrid RAID configuration that combines RAID 5 and RAID 1. Now, this setup provides blazing fast storage for home lab environments with around 70,000 IOPS, and that's perfect for my needs. Plus, it features a 10 gig Ethernet connection, which is pretty much required for this much speed and NVMe drives. It helps to make sure that data moves quickly between the cluster components, the two MS-01s and all of the virtual machines that I'm running. And so far, I have tried to tax this and have not realistically seen a bottleneck in just day-to-day -day home lab operations. Let me stop here and address a question. Why shared storage? Well, shared storage is a requirement that you have, whether you're running VMware ESXi, Proxmox, or another hypervisor, when you wanna have things like failover and high availability. Both traditional storage and HCI storage means the data is accessible to all of your hypervisor hosts. So if you simply have standalone hosts with local data stores and there's nothing wrong with that, it prevents you from taking advantage of the features like high availability and failover. Now, I know many are fans of hyperconverged infrastructure or HCI for short particularly in the VMware world with VMware vSAN. And I'm a big fan too, and I've used it extensively in production and in the home lab. So now the licensing charge for vSAN is licensed per terabyte. And many organizations with that change are moving away from HCI back to traditional shared storage. And it's crazy to me to see how this change in the industry created such a tremendous shift in the enterprise from what I am seeing. Also, with the MS-01, it only has three NVMe slots. So I knew that if I wanted to take advantage of the NVMe memory tiering, which I certainly do, and all the advantages that come with that, I would be limited on being able to run vSAN on this setup. So for now, I am sticking with traditional storage that gives me all of the same benefits using iSCSI LUNs. So what does my bill of materials look like for those of you who would love the nitty gritty details on this setup? Well, as mentioned, I'm running two Minis Forum MS-01 mini workstations. These have the Core i9-13900H processor, and I've loaded both up with 96 gigs of DDR5 memory. Each has an NVMe boot drive as well as NVMe memory tiering enabled with one of those NVMe drives that I have installed locally. And I do also keep a local NVMe data store. That is just so I can move VMs around if I were to take down my NAS for maintenance or other reasons, I would still have a place to easily get those VMs too. Now, I also am running the TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus NVMe NAS. I've got six two terabyte Samsung Evo 980 Pros and T-RAID, which is RAID 5 plus RAID 1, and that is connected up via 10 gig ethernet. Be sure to watch my recent video where I reviewed the TerraMaster F8 SSC Plus for all of those details. And then finally, for the networking side of things, I have one Ubiquiti Edge Switch 16XG with 16 ports of 10 gig ethernet for connecting everything together. And that's not a new addition to my home lab. I actually have had that switch in the lab for some years now, and that was my vSAN switch, as well as kind of my top of rack 10 gig switch that I use for everything. So how is all this working out? Well, honestly, it's working out better than I expected. In the past, I have steered away from these consumer NAS devices. However, I am impressed so far by the TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus. 
The performance is really great, especially with the NVMe memory tiering and the fast storage combined. The MS01 mini PCs are a huge upgrade as well from my old Supermicro Xeon Ds in terms of performance and efficiency. And the little TerraMaster NVMe NAS is also a beast so far, and it's provided really great performance on the storage side of things. I've got like 20, 25 VMs running right now and have not seen any degradation of performance and everything feels snappy, booting VMs, backups, anything that I throw at that environment has handled it without a hitch. So far, I am thrilled with this setup, but I wanna hear from you. What does your perfect home lab look like in 2024? Are you leaning towards HCI still, or do you think traditional shared storage is the way to go? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you have any questions about my setup or need help with your own, feel free to drop a comment in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more home lab content and just overall cool stuff. I'm Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Please do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and until next time, I will see you guys on the next video.